Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Hanging on to Hope podcast. I'm Brenda J. And I'm Karen Wonder. And we are HangingOnToHope.org. This podcast is intended as educational and is not psychological or medical advice. Always consult a professional when needed, and we disclaim any liability in connection with the instruction, information, or advice given. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Hanging on to Hope podcast. This is Brenda J. Today, we're excited and honored to have Nicole Wilkins back on the show. Nicole's first podcast was episode 12, where she tells her story, but so much has happened since that recording. Nicole had a double mastectomy two days later after we recorded that. She then guest starred on episodes 100, 101, and 102 if you want to take a listen. Since then, Nicole went in for reconstructive surgery, and they discovered what they thought was scar tissue was invasive cancer. She's just started chemotherapy, which will be followed by radiation. Not only has it been a tough time physically, but the emotional toll has been so difficult. Nicole's going to talk a little more about that in a moment, but before we start, let's give her a proper introduction. Nicole's a friend and former Southwest Airlines co-worker. Nicole has an incredible story and years of education and experience in the field of abuse. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology, worked as an outpatient mental health and drug and alcohol counselor, worked in a locked sex offenders facility for ages 10 to 21, and did mental health case management in the community. She also worked in an adolescent psych hospital, and she has a blog on Instagram, which talks about her healing journey. It's very inspirational and encouraging. So welcome back to the show, Nicole. Hi. Hi, Brenda. Thanks for having me again. (laughs) Yeah, great. Hi, Nicole. Thank you so much for coming on to the show again. Oh, thank you once again, ladies, for allowing me to be here with you. I always have such a great time coming on this podcast, and I like to always say thank you to you two for keeping this podcast going. I think you don't realize sometimes how much you're helping people and what ways you can be helping them. And just me being on this podcast today is helpful to me and therapeutic to me. My life since April 10th has been a bit of a roller coaster. I like to call it an emotional roller coaster. I went in for surgery, reconstructive surgery on April 6th. And there was an area that I discovered in January that the doctors all thought were scar tissue. However, they did a biopsy when I went in for the reconstructive surgery on April 6th, and I found out April 10th that that area was invasive breast cancer. So this has just been a lot to handle emotionally, mentally. Continuing with part two. But as abuse victims, that's what causes the disease, and it causes such adrenal fatigue and and sickness and disease. So that's that was explained really well. I like that article how they explain yeah, that really to to our listeners. Some researchers have attempted to clarify to what degree stressful life events are related to sickness. When difficult and threatening events occur, it is how we perceive and respond to them that determines the intensity, like we've been talking about, of the stress. Coping with stress, having a positive attitude. It's more important to know what sort of patient has a disease than what sort of disease a patient has. That's a quote from Sir William Osler, MD. The importance of attitudes, like we've been talking about, feelings and beliefs, beliefs have been revealed by various studies. To ignore or neglect the power of positive expectations and beliefs is to abandon one of the most valuable tools known to medicine. Listening to your body, recognizing when it's time to slow down, to take a break and rest, to be able to have times of meditation, reflecting on change. For a person facing cancer or any illness, learning to cope with stress in a self-nourishing way is an important factor in aiding the treatment process, increasing chances for recovery, helping to prevent or minimize flare-ups, maximizing the quality and length of life. Coping with stress is only part of the comprehensive treatment program, but is the part perhaps that's most influenced by the patient. That's something that, yeah, you're in control of there. Yeah, so it is important to listen to your body, and I started to do that a lot more lately. Like I, I was, as an abuse victim, I was so disconnected from my body. It didn't even feel like it was mine. I wasn't a person. And now, like lately, I've just been, okay, what's my body trying to tell me? Yeah. And I think that's important for people to do. And Nicole, definitely, we were talking about this, just to slow down, take a break, to rest. Mm -hmm. To journal or just take some time to reflect. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to a song. And and mindfulness is very important, just being in the moment. 
I read a book, I don't remember which brain book it read, I read because there were so many, but where they talked about the healthiest is when your brain's just not thinking about anything at all. Mm. <laughs> and that sounds weird, but it's like kind of given it that you're not stressing and worrying. Yeah. Just your body's just it's able to brain. relax and not, mm -hmm. and that's part of the mindfulness and the meditation. Yeah. And, well, and being that's... aware of your breathing, because that's what I have to do a lot, because I don't, I automatically breathe shallow when I'm stressed. And so it's taking the time, even at work, just taking the time to take some deep breaths and let my body relax. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what the, the next section we were going to talk about. And I know oh. meditation and, and yoga is something that, that you're interested in, Karen. And yeah. it says that there's been recent research into meditation that has shown that simple pairings of daily deep relaxation may have important and lasting effects on a wide variety of stress disorders, notably high blood pressure. And like we said, mindfulness is really just being in the moment because I think that I have a hard time with mindfulness. I know I need to, I, there's actually even an app I think I have on my phone that I need to utilize more yeah. often. And my therapist, Sarah, when I was seeing her some time ago, which I'm actually excited I get to go back and start seeing her Monday because now she takes my insurance. Mm -hmm. And I definitely need therapy right now with what I'm going through. <laughs> yeah. She had sent me to a yoga class because she's like, you're just the type of person that I need you to relax and I need your mind to shut off because I just, I'm a go, go, go. And sometimes I just wish there was a switch where I can just shut my mind off and yeah. just relax. That's why I like going to movies though, because movies, that's what I can totally get into. It's a good movie. I'm not worrying. I'm not overthinking in a movie, you know, so I think sometimes it's good just to, you know, go to a movie or oh, do something. Oh, my whole marriage, that was my escape was going to movies. <laughs> I, that's why I noticed I don't watch hardly. I love movies. I don't have to watch anything anymore though, because I don't need to escape from him. Oh, I still like to have a time to watch yeah. movies. Oh, I would. I still overthink. So. They'd let me leave work <laughs> yeah, me early. Too. They would le let me leave work early. All the kids would be at school and I'd go see a movie by myself. Mm. It was like my escape of like, especially I had three kids. So, you know, it was yeah. stressful. I'm like, oh, I get to go to yeah. a movie. <laughs> I get to go to a movie and just sit here. Oh, it was just the best. Yeah. I always feel so much better when I go to a movie. If it's a good movie. Because yeah. Well, I've they totally did say, I did read another article that said that watching a movie will take your brain out of that. Yeah. It, it does. totally does that for it me. And exercise does too. Yeah. Because, you know, if you're feeling down about something or overthinking, like, you know, it releases endorphins or whatever. So it helps right. your thinking yeah. process too. Did you want to talk to us more, Karen, about yoga or different ways to meditate? Because I know that's, yeah. I know we've talked about starting a yoga like class together with yeah, you. One really of these. Days. There yeah, one. one of these days I need to put into practice all of that stuff that I've learned. <laughs> No, I mean, I'm a big believer in just to me, it's something I constantly have to work on. I'd like to actually get more training and breathing because sometimes I think I don't know if it's because I'm so stressed out or I just I have a hard time breathing. And there's one thing that I, one technique I learned that I, that really helps me and it sounds really silly. But if I'm having trouble, because you know, you really need to exhale all the air from your lungs, they say if you say the S word, like, S and like completely empty the air from your lungs, I mean, you can even kind of go through it where you're breathing in. And then when you breathe out, just make an S sound until all the air is out of your lungs. I know it sounds really weird, but it helps me. Calm in, down. Yeah, it yeah. helps me calm down because then that next breath is deeper because you're, you've emptied your lungs. Mm. And if you're not doing that, you're just constantly breathing that same air. So it's like oh. it re gives you more oxygen. But I don't know. I remember reading that. That's something that's, that helps me. I'll be driving on the way to work. <laughs> yeah, the hey, whatever out. helps <laughs> I know I've even told people about it I'm like that really helps yeah. <laughs> it but really I, yeah. is all about self-care and self-change and I know that's the next thing we're going to talk about and the one big thing in there is that we are in control of our own self-care and that looks different for all of us one yeah. person may like to do yoga yeah. another person may like to go run five miles you know someone else may like to go biking hiking and so that is something that you are in control of we're not always in control of the stress around us but yeah. we are in control of how we operate in self-care and try to cope with the stress around us so that's really yeah. important to be able to control what you can control and it's healthy again it's not selfish it's self-care it's healthy to have self-care Definitely. Yeah, your body needs downtime. Definitely. And so going on to, like Brenda had said earlier, this is a podcast that helps abuse victims and abusive and toxic relationships is the next thing that we like to talk about a little bit more. And like I said, my theme has literally been throughout this whole cancer journey, my new cancer journey, I guess I would say is protecting your peace. Mm -hmm. And that may yeah. look like something different for everyone, but it's just, what can I do to protect my peace? What is disturbing my peace? And relationships is one big thing. I've unfortunately recently had to end a relationship with someone who I care dearly about, but I had to realize that 
the people pleaser in me needed to stop. Yeah. <laughs> first yeah. and foremost, because this person was not healthy for me. It was a toxic relationship. And I think I had a hard time seeing it for what it was because like we had touched on earlier, when your history is being in unhealthy relationships, you don't know what a healthy relationship is. And right. so yeah. you get used to the chaos, you get used to the roller coaster of, oh my gosh, we had this great time together, but now we had this major fight. And it seems normal to you. And I can honestly say that the two years I was in this relationship, it did seem normal to me. It didn't seem mm. earth shattering to me because the relationships, unfortunately, that a lot of them yeah. I've been in in my life have been like that. Yeah. So I don't know what a relationship looks like without a lot of arguing and fighting. And I think that too many of us, unfortunately, have that same experience I was talking to my roommate recently, and she has a friend that she works with on the road a lot. And she had said her friend has this new guy that's like wonderful to her. I mean, just dotes on her, just so caring and loving. But what my roommate's friend said to her is, I don't know what to do because I'm not used to being in a healthy relationship. I'm used to being in a dysfunctional, toxic relationship. Yeah. So here, this guy's being wonderful to her, and she doesn't even know how to react mm. because when you're used to chaos... Yeah. I hear that a lot from abuse victims. Yeah. Yeah. And like, so, this person's great, but I, I couldn't even. Yeah. Well, I remember when I was dating. I mean, I, I think I, I think I feel differently about that now. I mean, now I think I want that, but I remember thinking that too. And a guy that would bring me flowers and be super nice, it felt weird. It felt, I felt more yeah. comfortable in that chaos. And I hope that I've changed that now. Yeah. Because I feel like I've done a lot of healing yeah. on that. So now I'm like, I don't want that. Yeah. It's you hard know? to change. We're, all, we're all sitting here and we're all people pleasers. And I, <laughs> I was in denial that I was a people pleaser until. I started looking at this and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's why yeah. I keep saying protect my peace, protect <laughs> my peace. Like, I love you. And I can't just focus on the positive aspects of our relationship. And that's why I'm like, my theme is protect our peace. We're in yeah. control of who we allow in our lives. And if that person is toxic, a source of stress, negative, not uplifting, we have the ability to cut that person out of our lives or limit our contact with them. Yeah, Because it could be someone, I'm, it's not my mom, but I'm saying, for example, yeah. if it were my mom, like I'm, I'm obviously going through something that it does bother my mom. And my mom tends to be someone who does not express her feelings very well. And I can kind of tell when she's getting stressed out. So if she was someone that would stress me out during this cancer, I'm not going to stop talking to my mom altogether. But anyone, whether it's your mom, your family, your friend, yeah, you might have to limit that contact yeah, because you, have over you have control over that. And sometimes you have to cut them out altogether. But the most important thing is to protect your peace and self care is about setting boundaries in relationships, and especially with abusive and toxic people. And I know in the relationship that I unfortunately just had to end, I would talk about healthy boundaries and what a healthy relationship looks like. And we just weren't on the same page. And I yeah. I think partially it's because he was like me. He was used to being in mm. unhealthy relationships too. Right. So it was normal. Like, right. what do you mean boundaries? Yeah. What do you mean <laughs> like healthy relationship? But isn't it weird that like we're all people pleasers and we can all see clearly when if you're your guy's a jerk or my guy's a jerk, but, <laughs> but we can't see it ourselves. Yeah. Or you see it, but as a people pleaser, <laughs> we're in you, denial, right? You like, yeah, yeah. you kind of block it out. We try yeah, to fix them. We try to, oh, yeah. they're going to change or you we're going to fix them. Yeah, you try to change the red flags green. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I think... Another aspect of it for me being a people pleaser, and I think that we can all relate, is that us three sitting here, we've all been spiritually abused as well. Yeah. So we hold on to relationships too long because you think, I have to be the better person. I have to hold on. Like, what if he stays in my life and perhaps like I'll touch him and he'll get saved and... <laughs> I mean, come on, like, yeah. you have to be the savior, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and so yeah. I think too Which many people... is only people, God's job, it's not our yes, job. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we can't do that, you can't yeah. force anyone to change. <laughs> yeah, so, quite a topic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. I was in denial about being the people pleaser for a long time, especially when Karen did her podcast. I was like, I'm not a people pleaser. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't struggle with that. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the only thing I don't struggle with, and I'm like, I do struggle with that. <laughs> 
I think yeah. everyone has a little bit of people pleasing. I mean, that's part of being human. I don't Some know about that. More. I don't think like narcissists <laughs> and people, they're mm, just about, yeah, they're, they those. study, yeah, they study people, sociopaths and narcissists, they study people and it's nothing's genuine. Yeah, that's it's just true. what can they get out of you? Yeah. Yeah. They're not true. trying to please anyone. But I mean, most people in general, <laughs> not, not excluding, yes. <laughs> excluding those type of people. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm on a 50-50 on that one. Yeah, I so I think know. it's important to make sure that you're setting boundaries. And like I said, Absolutely. my theme, protect your peace. And going back to the positive attitude, we were reading in part of the article, it said it's often possible but difficult to see a major illness as an opportunity rather than a tragedy. And when I read that sentence... It really hit me when Brenda and I were doing the research, because what I thought of is when I was diagnosed April 10th, it was obviously devastating. It was like unbelievable. And my daughter had said, Mom, and I know she was trying to be positive and upbeat and probably suppress the negative emotional feelings. But she's like, Mom, this is just the Lord adding a little razzle dazzle to your story. This is going to be more razzle dazzle to your testimony. And I tried to remember her saying that. And also I have a dear friend, Stacy. I used to sing with her back in Pittsburgh in a Christian group I sang in. And she has encouraged me all along. She's like, Nicole, I'm really just believing that through this, I can't wait to see what God's going to do, is what she keeps saying to me. Like, I believe that you're going to touch so many people and help so many people, even just from being positive and uplifting through it, or just from you going through it, you're going to be able to help someone else. Yeah. Because if you've gone through it yourself, you can help even more than someone who hasn't gone through it. Right. So, you know, to become hopeless and feel helpless, it only makes the situation worse. To go to the other extreme with denial of feelings and business as usual, everything is fine, this facade. It also does nothing about the internal load of stress because I've kind of tend to be that way sometimes, be a little bit unrealistic and live in a facade. Like I had said recently, oh, well, maybe I can go back to work in, in November. And my daughter and a friend of mine that was sitting in treatment last week, my friend was like, Nicole, you're probably not gonna go back to work this year at all. <laughs> and my daughter looked at me and she's like, Mom, did you really think you were going to go back to work in November? And I was like, yeah, maybe. (laughs) So I tend to, even though I like to say, oh, I'm going to be positive and I'm going to turn this tragedy into something good. I also tend to be a little bit go far (laughs) to the other side and be a little bit unrealistic because obviously these treatments cause a lot of fatigue and, you know, I'm a flight attendant, so I need to be able to have my energy and I'm just going to be getting done with treatments hopefully in October. So that's why I was saying November. So we'll see. (laughs) Yeah, it's probably a good balance to have some (laughs) sense of reality, but also have positive, Mm -hmm. be hopeful. Well, her daughter Taylor was on one of the podcasts with Leonard, and she's hilarious. The other day, she says, you need to take a picture of your plate of food of dinner, what you're eating, and send it to me, because she wanted to make sure she's eating food. Yes. (laughs) Her daughter, it's like she's the mother. It's like, (laughs) it's hilarious. It is just, it's pretty funny, but she just loved her, loved you so much. But honestly, like on the topic of going from one extreme to the other, you do have to kind of self-examine and the two key elements of change are analyzing and reconstructing your lifestyle and practicing and developing enjoyable techniques for reducing stress. So not just that positive attitude, but taking a look at some questions. It is often easier said than done to be positive in the midst of a diagnosis like this, but no doubt more difficult and it requires motivation. But ask yourself some of these key questions like, what do I want out of life? What's important to me? What are my priorities? Where's my own happiness and my health on the list? What chronic habits do I have that may have led to this illness? And what realistic steps can I take to change? So those are some of the questions that I've also looked at. Like, I hate, yeah, I hate that this short temporary point in time that I can't do the things that I'm used to doing in life. That, as I like to say, my life has been flipped upside down. But I also like to say I've been using the quote with my daughter, my own little quote I came up with, I'm like, this is just one chapter in the story of my life. Yeah. So this one chapter, if I have to be down and out of commission for six months, what is my priority? Like this question here, my health has to be a priority first. Right. And I have been a, a pretty good advocate for my health because we, in January, when I found the area, the doctors really were all confident it was scar tissue. And if I think if I hadn't of kind of pushed and been like, well, you know, anything in my breast area, I'm a little sensitive about. So can we check it out? And he's like, well, we can do a biopsy in April when we do your surgery. But it's nothing to worry about. I literally remember him saying, don't lose sleep over it. Wow. And so I believed in too. Some kind of intuition. Yeah. Though, um, like I, oh, yeah. at first, I think I tried to convince myself that Nicole, you are like, 
being the overthinker, you're overthinking mm. yourself into a hole. I literally started, and this is so bad. Don't do this. I need, to, I'm, I'm talking to myself, not just the listeners. <laughs> Stop Googling stuff. Do not start Googling stuff. Because when I found the area in January, I started Googling stuff. Like, after you've had a double mastectomy, could you still get breast cancer, like invasive mm. breast cancer? And that got in my head. But mm. then when he was so reassuring, like, Nicole, you've had all these surgeries. That's nothing more than scar tissue. Please don't lose sleep over it. And I remember my daughter being at that appointment with me when the doctor said, don't lose sleep over it. And she was like, oh, do you know who you're talking to? Do you know how my mother is? <laughs> like, she's like the master overthinker. But then even the morning of surgery, I was like, am I overthinking it? Like, this is probably just scar tissue. And I was really at ease. So like, the following Monday, when I open up the pathology report and see that, the breath was literally just taken out of my whole mm. body, but my health has to be important. And I do have to look at what yeah. chronic habits do I do or things that I do negatively that might cause any type of illness in my body. And what do I want out of life? I want to be healthy because I want to travel the world and I want to hike and, yeah. you know, do all these wonderful right. things. So if I don't put my health first right now, then I'm not going to be able to do those things that I really want out of life later. So we definitely have to take a look at that when we're looking at self-change and dealing with the stress around us. So answering some of those questions may require the involvement of professionals, family, close friends, perhaps a support group. To establish new priorities and develop realistic ways to reach them takes time, communication, and honest self-analysis. In conjunction with the goal, you may want to seek professional help in development of useful stress reduction techniques. And I know we talked about that earlier going to therapy. There's still that stigma of therapy, but it's very important. For me, it's important right now. I'm, I'm happy to be going back to therapy on Monday just to talk to that unbiased person and yeah. get some feedback and also work on the areas. All these things are legitly stressing me. What can I do to reduce that stress? Or yeah. what do I need to look at in my life right now and work on that that yeah. can continue to contribute to my healing? Therapy's so important because it's when you get to talk about things, but when you talk about things, then you realize what the problem is. But the podcast is amazing because this is where you get the education that you're not going to get at therapy. Exactly. Yeah. This yeah. is, the, it, it's, they're both important. Yeah. I think I've had probably, that's what I said, the balance of doing the podcast, going to therapy, doing the mindfulness, meditating on the word, on the scriptures, knowing the truth, replacing that scripture and that truth and living that. And then just exercise, making sure I get my workouts in. And then anything else that helps me relax, like my, my massages, my physical therapy. I mean, it's just this whole balance. And as soon as I stop doing one of those, like say I start working too much, then it's just stress, 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 stress. Mm -hmm. Then I'm almost just so relieved to like, let me get back to my balance. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I think I was just talking earlier with a friend about therapy and about me going back on Monday and they were saying that they had went to therapy, but they didn't feel it really helped them. And I did say, maybe you need another therapist and you just didn't click with that one. Or yeah. perhaps I think a lot of people don't realize that they think therapy is the in all be all fix all. Yeah. And that's therapy is just a very small part of healing and changing and yeah. recognizing the areas where you need to work on. It's just one little piece of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you need to do the work outside of therapy. Right. You need that's, to. That's the way yeah. to word it. Yeah. And that's really the most important thing. I think that's the key that people aren't understanding. Like I went to therapy and nothing helped. Well, no, because really, if you don't do the help outside of therapy, for me, I haven't been to therapy for well over a year because of an insurance issue, but I have gotten just as much therapy from podcast, you yeah. know, this one and other podcasts, audiobooks, sermons, daily devotion. So those are all yeah. therapeutic techniques. It's not just sitting in front of a therapist for an hour yeah. once a week or and every even other support week. Support groups. Yeah. yeah. Even support groups yeah. and you're in different support groups. I've been. Yeah. And even like life coaches yeah. are great. Yeah. And also that's like, a different aspect. Exactly. Like it's a totally different focus for a life coach. Yeah. It's like getting your life together, like mm -hmm. becoming productive again and figuring out what you love. What do I love to do? What What do I want to do with my life? What's God's purpose for my life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's all important. And you and I both, it's, it's exercise too, Yeah, which is something I can't control. I can't do much of right now, but that's another therapeutic thing, you know? Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. Especially so. for if you've been abused and you're in fight or flight. I know I'm not supposed to be running and I now I think about it in a different way when I'm running. Before it was like I had to run 
I don't know what I was running. I just didn't stop <laughs> for like all that time. I just kept running and now I run because I just enjoy it and it's just more relaxing and I'm not, I was sprinting sometimes. It was all that distress in my body mm-hmm. that was, I didn't know what to do with mm-hmm. when I got out. And so now I'm still running, but it's because I enjoy it. And then with lifting weights, it relaxes me. And then my EMDR therapies explain that's because your muscles are constantly tense from being in fight or flight. So you're fatiguing them to the point where now you can finally relax them. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it all made sense to me. I was like, oh, because I just felt weird. Like, I'm like, I, why is this? Why do I go to the gym and everyone else is like sweating and it's hard? And I'm like, oh, this is so <laughs> great. Like, all of a sudden I have peace and I'm happy. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, so it, it is, it's a combination yeah. of all of it. And yeah. I know it's not easy. Like, change is not easy, but making that concentrated effort to alter your pattern of stressful life events and the way you respond, you can influence the pace and intensity of your own life. And I know we've, talked about all the ways to do that and kind of going back to a little bit of the overthinking our our brain wanders and rambles all over the place thoughts run in a random fashion like the chatter of several radio programs like i said sometimes i wish i can flip the switch and shut my brain off yeah images flash across the internal mental screen like a picture on a movie screen and one key thing that we talked about in researching the article was to work more on that mindfulness yeah And I know that that's something that I have a hard time doing, but I'm here to admit that I need to work on the mindfulness more often. Yeah. And and one of the keys to stopping those distracting thoughts is just to have simple focus, kind of like what I talked about earlier. Try not to think so much, even not having a thought for at least a few minutes (laughs) is very good for you. I I don't, it sounds, that just sounds strange, but it's, we're constantly stressed and we're constantly overthinking. So just being in the present and the here and now. And because overthinking, I guess the way, way to reword what I just said is overthinking is stressful. Sometimes it's better not to think about anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the key to, is to keep it simple and enjoyable. Yes. Yeah. And along the lines of overthinking as well, I was given a um, suggestion for an audiobook recently, and it was all about thinking. And I believe the title was Don't Believe Everything That You Think. And I thought it was a great book because the whole premise was we can't stop thoughts from coming. Thoughts are going to come. But what we think after that thought comes is Mm -hmm. what destroys us. So for us overthinkers, that thought may come of, oh my gosh, I have my second chemo treatment tomorrow. Oh my gosh, am I going to be vomiting? Am I going to be so tired I can't function? Am I going to... The thought of I have that chemo tomorrow and I know that I'm a little anxious and concerned about it, but me taking that thought and then what am I thinking about that thought? Because I can't stop that thought from coming because I am concerned about my chemo tomorrow. But okay, that thought and you're concerned about the unknown. So now what am I going to think about it? Am I going to think oh my gosh, I'm going to get sick. Like, Mm. am I going to get sick? Am I going to be throwing up? I'm going to have to take all those meds to help with the side effects instead of, you know what, I'm going to go into this treatment. My daughter's going to be there to support me and I'm going to go home. I'm going to lay down. So it's like the thought, you know, the whole book, it's a really good book. The thought is going to come. You can't stop the thoughts from coming, but you can control what you're thinking about that thought. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So Karen, you kind of talked about this a little bit already. Yeah, I mean, it does take four deep breaths to get out of fight or flight. So just taking the time to take four deep breaths and making sure you're getting all the air out of your lungs. I think that's what I did before I went on that elevator up the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was about to have, like have a panic thing going on. But I was like, okay, breathe, remember? Yeah. Breathe. You, you learned yeah. that in all your podcasts, just breathe. And then I was all of a sudden, I was like, I'm okay. I'm yeah. okay. I'm doing this. Yeah. I so. need to do that more. <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, we forget. We do. We don't think about it. We don't think about it at all. And I do need to do more of the like, like the next point that we talked about is the technique of imagining yourself in a peaceful, pleasurable setting. And for me, that would be like, I love nature. Like I'm a beach person, like just being next to the beach is serenity to me. Mm. A warm beach, like a lush meadow, a refreshing lake, a cloud. So it's kind of like grounding and mindfulness. Yeah. Just different ways and techniques to kind of calm yourself down and be in the moment and relieve that stress. 
That's definitely something that I need to work on more. And they talk about grounding. I mean, even going, they say even going and stepping, you know, getting barefoot and putting your feet in the grass. I mean, sometimes it's simple things like that. Yeah. Or just for me, when when I get stressed at work, it's sitting in the patio and just looking at the trees and watching the birds. It just takes you out of your thoughts or that stress. It's very, very relaxing. Yeah. And I have a whole paper on different ways of grounding, but one of them is to just have your safe place, which is similar to what she just said. Yeah. You can have one safe place or multiple, but... I guess usually the safe place is more for when you have complex PTSD like me. So the stress reduction should be viewed along with food, sleep, and exercise as a vital element in maintaining health and resisting disease. And I think another fight that I've had with having Hashimoto's is I do have to take a lot of different vitamins. It was just my body was just so fatigued all those years. So I do believe in, you know, taking vitamins and supplements and the things that I need that I'm not getting from my food. And we did have a podcast on that, yeah. vitamins and supplements, but I didn't want to forget to mention that because there may be something you're lacking or when women get older, their hormones just get crazy. And there's a lot of different things you can use, vitamins and things that can help with that. Right, but, to restore balance. But just exercise in, in general can help with a lot of those things as well, especially when you lift weights. It actually produces more amino acids and reduces your blood sugar, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is great. Like, yeah. I'm so glad that we covered this. Yeah. And I like that we're coming from the stress and mentally, physically, emotionally, how stress can affect our bodies and, and all of those ways in a total treatment approach. It encompasses both the physical and the mental and emotional and recognizes their interaction. Major illnesses confronts us to a blunt reality that can stir and recognizing the importance of the reality of living the here and now and reevaluating our perspectives and nurturing, enjoying and balancing our life. It's perhaps the best place to start. Definitely. Well, we want to thank you so much for being on the podcast, Nicole. She is in our studio tonight. <laughs> yeah, she's here in actually person. with us. This Not is our first Zoom. one, I think. I did the other one with her at her house. I took the equipment to her house because she was having surgery. But this one, she is in our studio. It's fancy. <laughs> Well, thank you, ladies. <laughs> yeah, you thank you so it. much for yeah. sharing. But Nicole. I wanted to, if you could let our listeners know how to find your blog, because it's very, very encouraging. Yes, yes. I started a blog a, a few years ago. Um, I'm trying to get to have them to blogging a little more, but nonetheless, it is encouraging. It is on Instagram, and it's who underscore I underscore am underscore 13914. And that comes from Psalms 139.14. That's a scripture that's near and dear to my heart, especially dealing with low self-esteem and just saying that I am beautifully and wonderfully created in his image. And so that's why I started that. And that's the meaning of that. So you can find my blog on Instagram. Yeah. And it's also very inspiring with her journey that she's going through right now. It started out before that, before she you knew any of this, you started the blog. I did. Yeah. yeah I yeah. started the blog. I moved to Arizona like four years ago, going through a separation and divorce. And I had always wanted to start a blog. Like I find some people don't like when people share on social media, but I find that it's therapeutic for me to share my journeys and my shortcomings. Not only therapeutic for me, but I know that it's going to help somebody else. And so that's why I choose to share my personal journeys. And uh, now I've been sharing my breast cancer journey and have a few other dear friends that are also on their own journey with breast cancer with me. So I find it's really therapeutic and touching to me. I'm not sharing for sympathy or or anything. Like I find it really does touch my heart that people have reached out to me and asked me because of my situation, you know, my diagnosis. If I can help someone else and help myself at the same time, that was my whole inspiration for even starting the blog. And I've been very open about sharing my journey. Like I'm not one of those private people on, you know, about my breast cancer journey on Facebook. And I get why some people don't like that. That's, that's fine. We're all different. We're all wired different. Right. But it gives me joy to, you know, I shared last week with my first chemo treatment and that kind of touched me to write what I wrote. Like, Hey, cancer picked the wrong one. God's the only one that has dominion over me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was when I even put on there, even when I'm feeling down, I'm still going to declare that God has dominion over me. There's going to be a purpose through this. And so absolutely, when I share those little things, it's encouraging to me. And I know that it's going to help somebody else in the long run. Yeah, there's other people that need to hear it. Yeah, I forgot to mention at the beginning in the introduction, I just looked at it that and if you didn't listen to her other podcast, she is an abuse survivor as well. But you just have to listen to her podcast number 12. And then after this, (laughs) there you go. (laughs) All right. Well, this we're done. Anything else? 
Okay. She had to go to the bathroom Yay. right in the middle. I got to go right now. <laughs> I know. I've, uh, I've, my I've, bladder was... Oh, I've been holding oh. it. I've already done that too much today at work. It. Some reachers have... Some, <laughs> that. We're all... There you go. We've got dry mouth and everything. Everybody take a drink. <laughs> some reacher... <laughs> That's going on the end. The drink didn't help. <laughs> didn't. That's going on the end of the podcast. And it was only a drink of water. <laughs> it was, really. Honestly, it's not vodka in there. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Hanging on to Hope. Check out our website, hangingontohope.org. There are resources on there. And if you would like to donate or volunteer, you can do that through our website. We are a brand new nonprofit, so we appreciate any and all support. And we thank you for listening. And until next time, keep hanging on to hope. We are evidence that there is hope and healing for you. And our passion is to help you find it too. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thank you.